So here we're going to look at fair values in the context of agriculture. Um, and these two standards work quite well together in relation to the new rules. So a quick trawl through IAS 41. Um, we've got biological assets in the form of plants and animals. And these are only in the context of having managed agricultural activity. So if you've got a pet cat or a dog at your factory, that probably wouldn't be deemed to be part of agriculture. You wouldn't go around valuing that if you've got a cat that goes around catching mice in your factory. Now we're going to split these between two. First of all, we've got consumable biologicals. And here, um, this is where we're effectively we effectively sell the final product. So I've got a tree, and um, what we're going to do, we're going to sell the tree, use that for logging purposes, or a bearer biological asset, where the asset is the intermediary. It's, it's a means of generating our final asset, such as um, a vine, from which you could get uh, grapes, uh, an apple, where you get fruit, and so on. And these assets, the, the thing to note about them is that they, they grow. You know, they, they get bigger, they, they bear fruit, they get, get, uh, get grow, grow more branches, and so on. And we split those into two, in effect. Or rather, we have a second form of agricultural produce, which is the outputs. So we've got harvested products. Yeah, we're here we've got sheep, fruit, fish. These are the things which we're going to sell. In markets and so on. Now notice we exclude what happens to the assets after the point of harvest. So if you think about your sheep, well, yeah, the sheep would be sold for wool. The, the sheep could also be sold for meat. Uh, we've got plants, we've got rubber plants, which could be used to generate rubber. We, we're not interested in the final product. And also the land on which the assets grow, that would be simply gov governed by IS 16. Now these are only for managed agricultural activity. So if it's non-managed, if we've got no farmers actually planting the crops or things of that nature, such as in ocean fishing, um, then that would be excluded as well. When we talk about fish, we're talking about managed fish farms. What do we mean by point of sale cost? Because we'll come to these when we look at fair value. These are the, the commissions we would pay to an auctioneer. So if you think about it, um, you know, how do we sell sheep? Well, you'd normally go to a market, or you go to a market for fruit, and that, and the auctioneer would take a take a percentage. But we don't include our transportation costs. So, how do we show agricultural assets? We're talking about recognition. When do we show these in the accounts? Well, here we're just going to apply our general rule in relation to ultimately they're an asset. So we take into consideration, do we have control, e.g. do we have the risks and rewards of ownership? So you know, what, if you've got a flock of sheep, what are the risks? So the risks is that they're going to get diseased, they're going to be stolen, they're going to um, you know, not grow very well for whatever reasons, they might, you know, they might be subject to pollution and things of that nature. They generate future economic benefits. So that's going to be, think of revenue, revenue and cost savings. And we can measure them in some way at either cost or fair value. So how do we go about measuring them? 
Well, if they are biological assets, we value them at the SFP date. So remember, biological assets are things such as our trees. But if they're agricultural produce, we value them at the harvest date. So here, you'd be looking at things such as wheat, which you're going to harvest once or twice a year. Here, you might be looking at cattle, which are going to take a few years to grow before you take those to market. Trees, which are going to fell down for for logging purposes. Again, they will take a few years to grow. So how do we go about calculating fair value? Now here we've got the interlink with IRA, IFRS 13. So when we talk about fair value, we should be talking about a quoted price in an active market. Remember with an active market, we've got, we're talking about frequency and volume allow us to determine a price. That we're comfortable with. Um, so this um, this is going to be for most consumable biological assets. So where we got our final project. Um, we might have some market determined prices. So this is this is it equates really to a level one. And then you drop down to market prices where an active market does not exist. So this is the equivalent of a level two per IFRS 13. And then perhaps we've got a level three where we don't have a market for the asset in its present condition. So here I've given you the example. We've got a three-year-old tree which won't be chopped down for another 10 years because the wood's not mature. Or you might have some cattle which you're growing for slaughter and they're not old enough to be taken to market yet. So, so IRS 41 does tie in quite well with IFRS 13. So let's take a quick look at an example. Um, here we've got Paddington. Um, it's got a, a forest of 200 trees and these were originally planted in X1. They then take 20 years to mature. So as such there's no active market or indeed a market price. So therefore what we're going to have to do here is to take the third option. Work out the present value of the cash flows and we're told that only mature trees, ones, ones which are 25 years old, have fair values. So at the 31st of December X4, the fair value of a mature tree is $3,200. But remember, a mature tree is one that is 25 years old. So how much is a four-year-old tree worth? Well, at the 31st of the 12th X4, the present value or our fair value is going to be 3200 discounted by 8%. If we're at the end of X4, we have 21 years left before we reach maturity. So this gives us a value of $636. At the 31st of December X5, our fair value, well, market prices have changed for mature assets. The price is now up to 3,080. We're going to discount that by 8%, but only for 20 years. So I've now got 3,080 divided by 8% for 20 years. And this gives us a fair value at the end of X5 of 660. So you can see we've got a movement during the year, an increase of $24. Now, 
we ignore the future sales contract prices. So even if we have an agreed price to sell the asset in X years, don't use this. So what do we do with gains and losses? Um, well, what you do is that the fair value movement is taken as a gain or a loss in the income statement. So therefore, what we'll do in our example is therefore we're going to increase by 24 in our statement of profit and loss. Now, it could be that initially, where we think that the auctioneer's fees will exceed the fair value of the asset in its present condition, you might end up reporting a loss. But I wouldn't worry about that. I can't see the examiner getting bogged down in things of that nature. Okay, so we show our fair values in the balance sheet, in the statement of financial position, and it's the change is that $24 that we take to our statement of profit or loss. Now in terms of initial recognition, this is the value in year one of the asset at the SFP date. is taken to our statement of profit and loss. Now ideally what we should do is we should analyze the movement in price between the price change due to the movement in the market price and the physical change due to the growth of the, the biological asset. What you're doing here is that you are unwinding the present value. So if we crunch the numbers, so if we go to our maple tree example, let's just break it down into the components. But what's happened to the value of trees during the year is that they've gone down. Now if we ignore the issue in relation to the time value of money, so let's just discount them at the start of the year, the tree was worth 3,200, and at the end of the year, it's worth 3,080. So if we discount those both at our opening discount rate of 21 years, I've got 3,200 divided by 1.08 to the power 21, less 3,080 divided by 8% to the power 20, and that gives me A loss of 26 on price. But we've also got a gain due to growth. Now at the start of the year the asset was worth 3,200 and we're 21 years to go. Let's now assume that the asset market price had not changed and we're just looking at the physical growth of the asset, so we're going to assume a constant price from the start of the year. So I've got 3,200 discounted at 8% for 21 years, less 3,200 discounted at 8% for 20 years, and that gives us a 50 gain on growth. You put those two together and that gives us our overall 24 gain which is taken to the statement of profit and loss.